the guilty secret by paul de kock natalie de hauteville was twenty-two years old and had been a widow for three years she was one of the prettiest women in paris her large dark eyes shone with remarkable brilliancy and she united the sparkling vivacity of an italian and the depth of feeling of a spaniard to the grace which always distinguishes a parisian born and bred considering herself too young to be entirely alone she had long ago invited m d'ablincourt an old uncle of hers to come and live with her m d'ablincourt was an old bachelor he had never loved anything in this world but himself he was an egotist too lazy to do any one an ill turn but at the same time too selfish to do any one a kindness unless it would tend directly to his own advantage and yet with an air of complaisance as if he desired nothing so much as the comfort of those around him he consented to his niece's proposal in the hope that she would do many little kind offices for him which would add materially to his comfort m d'ablincourt accompanied his niece when she resumed her place in society but sometimes when he felt inclined to stay at home he would say to her my dear natalie i am afraid you will not be much amused this evening they will only play cards besides i don't think any of your friends will be there of course i am ready to take you if you wish to go and natalie who had great confidence in all her uncle said would stay at home in the same manner m d'ablincourt who was a great gourmand said to his niece my dear you know that i am not at all fond of eating and am satisfied with the simplest fare but i must tell you that your cook puts too much salt in everything it is very unwholesome so they changed the cook again the garden was out of order the trees before the old gentleman's window must be cut down because their shade would doubtless cause a dampness in the house prejudicial to natalie's health or the surrey was to be changed for a landau natalie was a coquette accustomed to charm she listened with smiles to the numerous protestations of admiration which she received she sent all who aspired to her hand to her uncle saying before i give you any hope i must know my uncle's opinion it is likely that natalie would have answered differently if she had ever felt a real preference for any one but heretofore she seemed to have preferred her liberty the old uncle for his part being now master in his niece's house was very anxious for her to remain as she was a nephew might be somewhat less submissive than natalie therefore he never failed to discover some great fault in each of those who sought an alliance with the pretty widow besides his egotism and his epicureanism the dear uncle had another passion to play backgammon the game amused him very much but the difficulty was to find any one to play with if by accident any of natalie's visitors understood it there was no escape from a long siege with the old gentleman but most people preferred cards in order to please her uncle natalie tried to learn this game but it was almost impossible she could not give her attention to one thing for so long a time her uncle scolded natalie gave up in despair it was only for your own amusement that i wished to teach it to you said the good m d'ablincourt things were at this crisis when at a ball one evening natalie was introduced to a m d'apremont a captain in the navy natalie raised her eyes expecting to see a great sailor with a wooden leg and a bandage over one eye when to her great surprise she beheld a man of about thirty tall and finely formed with two sound legs and two good eyes armand d'apremont had entered the navy at a very early age and had arrived although very young to the dignity of a captain 
he had amassed a large fortune in addition to his patrimonial estates and he had now come home to rest after his labours as yet however he was a single man and moreover had always laughed at love but when he saw natalie his opinions underwent a change for the first time in his life he regretted that he had never learned to dance and he kept his eyes fixed on her constantly his attentions to the young widow soon became a subject of general conversation and at last the report reached the ears of monsieur d'ablincourt when natalie mentioned one evening that she expected the captain to spend the evening with her the old man grew almost angry natalie said he you act entirely without consulting me i have heard that the captain is very rude and unpolished in his manners to be sure i have only seen him standing behind your chair but he has never even asked after my health i only speak for your interest as you are so giddy natalie begged her uncle's pardon and even offered not to receive the captain's visit but this he forbore to require secretly resolving not to allow these visits to become too frequent but how frail are all human resolutions overturned by the merest trifle in this case the game of backgammon was the unconscious cause of natalie's becoming madame d'apremont the captain was an excellent hand at backgammon when the uncle heard this he proposed a game and the captain who understood that it was important to gain the uncle's favor readily acceded this did not please natalie she preferred that he should be occupied with herself when all the company were gone she turned to her uncle saying you were right uncle after all i do not admire the captain's manners i see now that i should not have invited him on the contrary niece he is a very well-behaved man i have invited him to come here very often and play backgammon with me that is to pay his addresses to you natalie saw that the captain had gained her uncle's heart and she forgave him for having been less attentive to her he soon came again and thanks to the backgammon increased in favor with the uncle he soon captivated the heart of the pretty widow also one morning natalie came blushing to her uncle the captain has asked me to marry him what do you advise me to do he reflected for a few moments if she refuses him d'apremont will come here no longer and then no more backgammon but if she marries him he will be here always and i shall have my games and the answer was you had better marry him natalie loved armand but she would not yield too easily she sent for the captain if you really love me ah can you doubt it hush do not interrupt me if you really love me you will give me one proof of it anything you ask i swear no you must never swear any more and one thing more you must never smoke i detest the smell of tobacco and i will not have a husband who smokes armand sighed and promised the first months of their marriage passed smoothly but sometimes armand became thoughtful restless and grave after some time these fits of sadness became more frequent what is the matter asked natalie one day on seeing him stamp with impatience why are you so irritable nothing nothing at all replied the captain as if ashamed of his ill-humour tell me natalie insisted have i displeased you in anything the captain assured her that he had no reason to be anything but delighted with her conduct on all occasions and for a time he was all right then soon he was worse than before natalie was distressed beyond measure she imparted her anxiety to her uncle who replied yes my dear i know what you mean i have often remarked it myself at backgammon 
he is very inattentive and often passes his hand over his forehead and starts up as if something agitated him and one day when his old habits of impatience and irritability returned more marked than ever the captain said to his wife my dear an evening walk will do me a world of good an old sailor like myself cannot bear to sit around the house after dinner nevertheless if you have any objection oh no what objection can i have he went out and continued to do so day after day at the same hour invariably he returned in the best of good humour natalie was now unhappy indeed he loves some other woman perhaps she thought and he must see her every day oh how wretched i am but i must let him know that his perfidy is discovered no i will wait until i shall have some certain proof wherewith to confront him and she went to seek her uncle ah i am the most unhappy creature in the world she sobbed what is the matter cried the old man leaning back in his armchair armand leaves the house for two hours every evening after dinner and comes back in high spirits and as anxious to please me as on the day of our marriage oh uncle i cannot bear it any longer if you do not assist me to discover where he goes i will seek a separation but my dear niece my dear uncle you who are so good and obliging grant me this one favour i am sure there is some woman in the secret m d'ablincourt wished to prevent a rupture between his niece and nephew which would interfere very much with the quiet peaceable life which he led at their house he pretended to follow armand but came back very soon saying he had lost sight of him but in what direction does he go sometimes one way and sometimes another but always alone so your suspicions are unfounded be assured he only walks for exercise but natalie was not to be duped in this way she sent for a little errand boy of whose intelligence she had heard a great deal m d'apremont goes out every evening yes madame to-morrow you will follow him observe where he goes and come and tell me privately do you understand yes madame natalie waited impatiently for the next day and for the hour of her husband's departure at last the time came the pursuit is going on natalie counted the moments after three quarters of an hour the messenger arrived covered with dust well exclaimed natalie speak tell me everything that you have seen madame i followed m d'apremont at a distance as far as the rue vieille du temple where he entered a small house in an alley there was no servant to let him in an alley no servant dreadful i went in directly after him and heard him go upstairs and unlock a door open the door himself without knocking are you sure of that yes madame the wretch so he has a key but go on when the door shut after him i stole softly upstairs and peeped through the keyhole you shall have twenty francs more i peeped through the keyhole and saw him drag a trunk along the floor a trunk then he undressed himself and undressed himself then for a few seconds i could not see him and directly he appeared again in a sort of grey blouse and a cap on his head a blouse what in the world does he want with a blouse what next i came away then madame and made haste to tell you but he is there still well now run to the corner and get me a cab and direct the coachman to the house where you have been while the messenger went for the cab natalie hurried on her hat and cloak and ran into her uncle's room i have found him out he loves another he's at her house now in a grey blouse but i will go and confront him and then you will see me no more the old man had no time to reply 
she was gone with her messenger in the cab they stopped at last here is the house natalie got out pale and trembling shall i go upstairs with you madame asked the boy no i will go alone the third story isn't it yes madame the left-hand door at the head of the stairs it seemed that now indeed the end of all things was at hand natalie mounted the dark narrow stairs and arrived at the door and almost fainting she cried open the door or i shall die the door was opened and natalie fell into her husband's arms he was alone in the room clad in a gray blouse and smoking a turkish pipe my wife exclaimed armand in surprise your wife who suspecting your perfidy has followed you to discover the cause of your mysterious conduct how natalie my mysterious conduct look here it is showing his pipe before our marriage you forbade me to smoke and i promised to obey you for some months i kept my promise but you know what it cost me you remember how irritable and sad i became it was my pipe my beloved pipe that i regretted one day in the country i discovered a little cottage where a peasant was smoking i asked him if he could lend me a blouse and cap for i should like to smoke with him but it was necessary to conceal it from you as the smell of smoke remaining in my clothes would have betrayed me it was soon settled between us i returned thither every afternoon to indulge in my favorite occupation and with the precaution of a cap to keep the smoke from remaining in my hair i contrived to deceive you this is all the mystery forgive me natalie kissed him crying i might have known it could not be i am happy now and you shall smoke as much as you please at home and natalie returned to her uncle saying uncle he loves me he was only smoking but hereafter he is to smoke at home i can arrange it all said d'ablincourt he shall smoke while he plays backgammon in that way thought the old man i shall be sure of my game <laughs>